So what would you do if you found yourself face to face with an assassin? Virginia Prodon shares about growing up under an oppressive government, being an advocate for freedom and justice, and how that put her life in danger. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. So what would you do if an assassin showed up into your work to take your life? Well, this is exactly what happened to today's guest, and she's here to tell us about what happened next. And I promise you, you don't want to miss it, so get your cup of tea, cup of coffee, whatever, sit down. You want to hear this whole story. But before we get to that, joining me around the table is de Havilland Ford. How are you? I am amazing. And, you know, I'm so grateful for Daystar and Joni Table Talk with the conversations you bring to the table. So it's an honor to be here today. I just want to know, has anybody seen you on Joni Table Talk? Yes, they are, and they're messaging me about it. Like, wow, wow you're awesome. on Joni, but love it. That's they're awesome. We're excited. just honored to have yes, you. We love you. you. Anna Kendall, how are you? Well, I was in San Antonio recently, and I was stopped to say, I see you on Joni's ah, Table oh, Talk. Good. And I That's loved awesome. the show. It was so neat. That's great. Uh, and how are you, Rachel Lamb? <laughs> Brand. I am so excited <laughs> because I love hearing stories. And your dad always wanted you to be a lawyer, so we have a lawyer at the table. And I've dreamed that she was one. Yes, yes. and my I, I was a history minor in school, and yes. my history professor always thought that I would be a great human rights lawyer. And yes. so you're going to love this story. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? Doing good, thank you. We love testimonies. Oh, my goodness. I never get tired of hearing God's stories because that's what testimonies exactly, are. Exactly, and it encourages us of the presence of God in our life, what God can do. That's so good. A fierce defender of freedom and human rights, Virginia Prodan dared to stand up against injustice at the hands of a communist regime, and she would face unimaginable persecution in an attempt to silence her. Take a look. I should be dead. I was beaten, tortured. My family was threatened. All for defending Christ and standing up to an evil communist regime. Well, for Virginia Prodan, life growing up was full of pain and oppression, but despite her turbulent upbringing, God had a much bigger plan and purpose for her life. It would lead her to challenge her own government, put her life in danger, and come face to face with an assassin. And she's here to share more about that. Virginia, you've written an incredible book, Saving My Assassin. Let's just go back if we can. Let's start at the beginning. Uh, you were born in Romania. Uh, into a family, and I guess earlier you were sharing that around six or seven years old, you noticed conversation that happened in your home privately, but then conversation that happened outside of your home. Now, what, what was going on there? Tell us your perspective. Outside of the home, I noticed my parents being politically correct, meaning that they will give up the rights that the government will ask them to give uh, out of fear or out of concerns that everybody is doing. They need to keep a job, they need to keep food on the table, whatever the situation was. And also I noticed inside the home, they will whisper how horrible the government was and the fact that tomorrow they will ask them to give up more rights. So they didn't have the courage to speak out because of being fearful of yes. what would happen yes. to the family, mm -hmm. which is a legitimate concern, sure. I mean, yes. for sure. Um, so at some point, you're at a family gathering, and you notice you have a couple of lawyers in the family, and everyone's gathered around them. And even as a little girl, you thought, I may want to do that one day. Yeah, because lawyers were um, answering the questions of relatives, and I noticed, whoa, they know the answer, but they don't have the courage. So I said to myself, oh, I'm going to go to law school, and I'm going to learn the law and stand up for the law. That was what God put on my heart. So let's fast forward to you became a lawyer. Mm -hmm. You had an, an office. You had clients. 
but you didn't know Jesus. Exactly. Okay, so were you happy? Um, I was happy in a sense that I had custom furniture. Mm -hmm. I had um, uh, clothes like you buy here from Neyman Marcus. I had a salary that was limited by the government. I had a number of clients that I was able to take monthly. Um, but inside of me, I, I had a nanny for my girls. Um, people uh, um, were cooking for me and everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, financially, yeah. yes, financially, uh, yes, everything was okay. But inside of me, I was the poorest person in the world. I know you tell in the book that you, you come in one day and you've been successful, you've done well, and uh, but there's some emptiness. Yes. And you put your briefcase on her, your assistant's desk, and what did you say to her? I said... And it was hard for me to say it loud. I said, I can't find the truth. I don't want to be a lawyer anymore. It was so painful because for the time that I was six, mm. I had this dream. And she looked up at me like, where have you been? What are you dreaming? And she gave me three files telling me that three clients will come to the office and that one is inside of the office. So what did you do next? I took the files um, so upset that nobody understands and I couldn't believe that I'm ready to quit, but God. Mm -hmm. God brought to my office this client. I have been working with him for more than a year. And I do remember um, many times I watch him and I watch his face in the craziness of socialist and his face was full of joy full of peace and full of full of confidence and that made me crazy <laughs> watching him and i thought i need to fix this man he's crazy but that day when i was ready to quit walking inside god put me face to face with joy <laughs> confidence and peace and I'm looking at him, and I heard myself saying, I wish I had in my life what you have in your life. And he looked straight up to me and said, do you go to church? And I stared at him thinking, I knew you are crazy. <laughs> I don't know why I asked, but he wrote something on a piece of paper and gave it to me and said, this is our church. Would you come to our church next Sunday? And I heard myself <laughs> saying, yes, I was so determined. Now, you notice she did not say it. <laughs> she heard herself saying, and you're like shocked that you were saying yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The next Sunday, I was at his church. They were mm -hmm. outside waiting for us. And as I walk inside, wow. I hear a song I never heard before. The song was, Sinner Come Home. And I start to encourage myself, and I said, oh, calm down. This is a good group. These people have a celebration. A man must be behind me. His name must be Sinner. And he's <laughs> coming, coming home to celebrate, you know. This is what I knew about sin and about the Bible, about God. Because when socialists and communists come, they take away your Bible your right to even share the gospel was privately inside of your home. Mm. We stood where the client told us, and the pastor came, opened the Bible and read. Jesus Christ said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. Imagine in that quiet church, somebody said, what? That was me. <laughs> Finally, somebody said, Virginia, I am the truth. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. yes. You look at the wrong places. And that day, I accepted oh. Christ as my Lord and Savior. Oh, and he put on my heart the mission to defend Christians and human rights cases. Did you have a peace that you had never had before? I had a peace that I never had before. I had, um, 
I was bold and, and courageous. Uh, I realized that, and I believe it's the reason why somebody else was obedient in this process. And that was my church. Mm -hmm. My church for six months, they trained me on who I am in Christ yes. and who God is. Yes. And that was <laughs> absolutely necessary and absolutely amazing yes. in my walk with Christ and what he wanted me to do. Yes. So then you begin to defend people that were opposed to the government, who were opposed to socialism. And um, did anybody notice? Oh, the government noticed that. At that time, uh, dictator Ceausescu wanted the most favored national status from um, America. And attached to that, President Ronald Reagan and Congress gave him the most favored national status, attached with respecting human rights and Christian rights and allowing Bibles from America to come and missionaries from America to come. But he didn't publish that. Nobody knew that. We didn't learn in law school about that. But he agreed to that. He agreed yeah, to that. And also he took the money from the most favored national status to build a palace and to build a lavish life and keep us starving to that. Okay, you begin to do this new work that you feel like God has called you to. You know it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. And actually the government is keeping a record yes. of what you're doing almost daily, yes. where you are, what you're saying. Did they ever interrogate you or arrest you during that time? Yes. Um, first of all, as a lawyer, you, you ask yourself, I want to uh, defend these uh, clients. Where is the law? So I pray and I said, Lord, help me to find the law that will defend these Christians. So I went to, to the library and I had no idea that the government had those laws from the capitalist era, did not take them from the book to say to American people, we have the laws, nobody is using them, but they kept the laws under a lock. Mm. When I went to the library, somebody forgot the books on the table. Wow. <laughs> and the good Lord said, make That's copies. Awesome. So the first time when I went and defended my clients, I told the judge, Your Honor, please release my clients today because we have the law and they have the right to share the gospel, to share the Bible from one uh, um, church to another for Bible, vacation Bible school. The judge looked at me like, you are crazy. I went to my briefcase, I took the copies, and I gave it to the judge and the prosecutor. They turned red. And I didn't know at that time why. And um, they said, okay, we'll uh, take a break. We'll make the decision today or tomorrow. I went back home and uh, late at night, I listened to Voice of America and Free Europe because I wanted to find out what's going on in the world. Even though we were not allowed to, um, to listen to our enemies, Americans. So I listened and all of a sudden I realized I became the news. They were talking about me, a young um, attorney under 30 years old, 82 pounds, under five feet tall, presenting uh, laws to the government and winning the case. And I thought, how is that possible? And later on from the American embassy, I found out that behind me, as I was talking with the judge, there were representative from all over the world, including America and, and Europe, Israel, Germany, wow. everywhere. And they were writing down back to their country and saying, there is someone who's taking the government to court. That is Okay, great. so when was the first uh, interrogation where they arrested you? After I defended the first clients, daily 
they interrogate me and they, they uh, torture me and they ask me to give up. They said that when they accepted me at law school, they consider me an elite of the society because uh, people that are accepted by the government in uh, Romania at that time will become lawyers, judges, prosecutor, ambassador, and they said, as a lawyer, you are you supposed to protect the government against the dissidents, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. And I said, nobody told me in law school, and I know a lawyer speaks for those who cannot speak for themselves. So that, that was daily. So how many times were they watching your house or bugging your home or... Every, or questioning you. I mean, did it yeah. happen a lot then after this case? Every single day, even when we will go to church, sometimes they will go inside of our home and they will move the furniture. They will uh, forget a belt or they will eat my food and leave the, the dirty dishes. Uh, All they're saying is stop what you're doing. You're now an enemy of the mm -hmm. government and we are going to, this will keep on until you stop, but you didn't stop. I received some documents uh, to, that will prove that the dictator is lying again and again to the entire world. And I was talking with God and say, Lord, if they find those documents when they interrogate me and they search me, they will kill me immediately. But I decided I trust you and I'll do it. So I made a, a packet in, uh, in my suit and I put the documents there, knowing that as I will leave the, in the morning, they will take me to interrogation and search me. But that day, out of all the days of interrogation, they forgot to search me. And I was able to give the documents to the American embassy and later on, President Ronald Reagan got them and decided to take the most favored national status from dictator. And of course, the dictator was very furious. And I believe 99.9% .9 he believed that I was the one providing that. So tell us about the day at your office that the assassin came. So he sent my new client close to five o'clock. So my uh, assistant introduced him to uh, my office and she said goodbye, I, I need to go and pick up my kids. And you think this is a new client? Yes, I'm thinking it's a new client. It's, it's just normal, lots of clients will come this way. He was six, 10 feet tall. He heard uh, my assistant closing the door and he pulled his jacket took the, the gun and pointed to my face and said, I'm not your client. I'm here to kill you. You don't want to listen. And he was screaming and he said, because I take this assignment, I will be number one in okay. dictator's rank. Uh, and he explained it to me how he's gonna kill me. There was no way to run and escape. My knees were shaking. I heard my heart in my ears. My uh, hands were shaking. It was so much noise inside of me, a noise from him. But I heard the voice of God saying, share the gospel. Mm. And I started to share the gospel because I look at him as a human being that Christ died for him. Like what was the first thing you said to him? I know that you need to do a job. I know that you are looking for something, but you don't know because I was in your place. I was looking for something. And I have a job too. Would you like to hear from me? And to my surprise, he said yes. So I started to say the gospel to him word by word. And his shoulders relaxed. He put the gun down. He noted several times that at the end, he accepted Christ mm -hmm. as his Lord <laughs> and Savior. Wow. God saved both of us yes. and our lives will never be the same. I want to say to your audience, people that are uh, making fun of you, marginalize you, maybe take even your job from you. They are not your enemies. Evil one is the, your uh, enemy. They are just slaves in the tent of the evil one. Let God use you to bring them to the cross. Awesome, awesome. And that's not the end of the story. What no. happened after this? 
after this, uh, President Ronald Reagan find out what is going on. And he got the papers. He got the papers and everything. So he pick up the phone and called the dictator and make, made a deal with him. He said, I will give you the most favored national status if you, for another year, if you leave, let uh, Virginia and her family come to United States in one day, the next day, that uh, President Reagan was fearful that I'm gonna die. Mm. The dictator said one month. Mm. He prepared another, another attack on me, but God did not allow him. Wow. So we, we came to United States of America. I came empty handed. I didn't know one word in English. I knew five languages. I had two girls under 10 years old. I was pregnant with my son. I came with my uh, husband who later on um, um, just left us. And I was left in a foreign country mm -hmm. uh, with no money, no friends, but with God to raise three kids. And and you spoke five languages, but one of them was not English. So yes. here you are learning <laughs> English, yes. yes. And I, uh, I learned English not as fast as my kids. And I went to law school, SMU Law School. I opened my law firm. I, uh, Tyndale published my book. I go and speak around the world. And I raised three kids. My first daughter graduated from SMU like me. My second daughter from Harvard Law School. And my son from United States Air Force Academy. Oh. Oh. What an incredible yes. story. And that's still not the end of the story. <laughs> no, that's not. So one day I am in my office in Dallas, Texas, and a new client comes and he um, presented his case. He has a, had a very good case. He finished the presentation and he looked at me very frustrated. And he said, Virginia, don't you recognize me? I was thinking, who is this man? <laughs> and he showed me his Securitate ID. And I realized I was in face to face with my assassin. And for a few minutes, I relieved my moment back in mm. Romania. Oh, and then we share uh, what God is doing what in his life and what God is doing in my life. And I share that I am writing my memoir. And he asked me to let him write a chapter in my memoir. So it's in your Ooh, book then? Yes. It is in my book. <laughs> and his, his chapter described exactly how the socialists and communists mm -hmm. lied to him as a young person with free, free, free stuff mm -hmm. and transformed him into a monster that put in people's uh, houses uh, documents to prove that they were guilty or went to their house to kill them and everything. And he also explained how God redeemed his life. Mm -hmm. And he went into ministry. He went yes. ministry. And, and his, his son, son went into ministry. Oh, <laughs> yes. For both yes. pastors. Yes. How did they get yeah. out of Romania? He, he, Romania is a democratic country now. Uh, Ceausescu died in 1989, I believe. 19, yes, I came in 1988. Ceausescu died a year uh, after that. And uh, the revolution starts, and Romania is um, um, democratic. a democratic country. So he could leave. Yes, yes. So that is so amazing. You know wow. what? What stands God, out to me? <laughs> God changed Romania through one, me, and God cha can change America through you, there wherever you he Woo. put. Yes, Don't wait for preach. anyone else. Yes. <laughs> no. I'm telling you what. And another thing, just quickly, because we're out of time, share what America is to you, and, what, and, and now that's trying to be taken away. Yes. I watch you from Romania and for 30 something years from America. And I am an American citizen now. We as American people, we brought Christ, freedom and prosperity to people all over the world. It's time for us to bring Christ, freedom and prosperity back to America. Yes. And you said America is the only country. The only country where you can come empty handed and rebuild your life and mm, do things right. that humanly might be considered impossible, but with God, everything yes. is possible. Yes. Ask yourself, and, and I want to say it the highest honor 
as a Christian is to suffer for Christ and with Christ that others might see mm. his power, his love, his sovereignty, and his forgiveness for yes. every soul. And yes. you said during one of the interrogations they were hitting your head up, yes. up against the table, mm. and it was it was more brutal than some, yes. of, some of the interrogations had been. And uh, all of a sudden, I ask you, did you have peace? Was God there with you? And you said it was like um, God was right there with me. But he told you to say something to them. And what was it you said? Yes, I was full of blood. They were hitting me. And I remember the Lord saying, tell them that I love them. And as I was full of blood, full of bruises, I look at them and I said, I, know, I don't like what you are doing. But God loves you and I choose to love you. They were turning their heads because they were crying. Oh, wow. God's love conquers every soul, absolutely yes. every soul. Yes. Amazing, mm -hmm. amazing. Well, incredible story. I'd be remiss if I didn't give you an opportunity to pray. And if you would all just pre uh, repeat after me a simple prayer like the assassin prayed yes. and like Virginia prayed that day. And it's simply this, dear Jesus, dear Jesus, Jesus. I love you today. I love Thank, you today. Today. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I want to ask you today, forgive me of my sins. Of my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Come into my life. Be Lord of my life. Be Lord of my life. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. And allow me, and allow me to, do everything to do everything that you've called me to do. Called me to do. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. amen. I would love to send you a book entitled, Now What? If you pray that prayer, you say, well, what does that prayer do? Well, that prayer uh, is the most important prayer that you could ever pray because, because of what Jesus did, because he died for our sins. Yes and he rose again on the third day, we have the opportunity to pray and ask God to forgive us through his son. That's what, remember Virginia said, uh, that's, that scripture, the, the pastor quoted, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except by me. I don't care who you are, where you are, what religion you are, we love all religions, but I'm gonna tell you that some of you, you really want that peace. You haven't had it in a very, very long time. Some of you have never had peace. You have everything, but you don't have peace. I'm telling you, you can have that peace that passes all understanding today. And I'm excited about what God has for you. It's an important time, important season that we're living in. It's important that you understand that God, not only do you have eternal life in heaven, which that's what that prayer does, it gives you yes. eternal life. But it also, I think, opens your heart to understand that God has an incredible purpose for your life. I just hope you enjoyed hearing Virginia's amazing testimony. Yes. But God, remember that no circumstance is too big for God and no person is too lost for him to transform their life. If you're watching today and you want to experience that life-changing hope, if you prayed that prayer, there's a toll-free number that's on the screen. We'd love for you to call and that let us pray with you, encourage you, send you that free book. And I want to thank Virginia for joining us and sharing her story. Be sure to pick up a copy of her book, very juicy here, right here. If you want to get it, it's available now. And for more on her work or to book her to speak at your church, you can visit her online at virginiaproton.com. Let us uh, know your thoughts about today's program. Leave us a comment, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. And uh, Virginia, quickly, you're working with... I am working as a lawyer by myself, but I also am an, a law attorney with Alliance Defender Freedom. And I was a troublemaker in Romania. I'm a troublemaker here yes, uh, for, right. for Christ and for everyone yes. who is You're in a troublemaker trouble. for the enemy. <laughs> yes. yes. And yes. you are a, a passionate standard bearer for yes. God. Yes. Well, I want to thank you for watching. I'm really excited about those of you that prayed that prayer. I mean, some of you can't even believe you're just like Virginia when you said yes and you prayed the prayer because God has been working on you. I mean, supernaturally things have been happening. He's trying to get your attention. He loves you today so much. We love you and uh, pray that this program today blessed you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.